Hey y'all, welcome back. This is going to be Unit 2C, uh, the Establishment Clause in Schools. So a lot of this is based on Unit 2B, the Lemon Test especially, all right? So the first case is Stone v. Graham in 1980. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's a 5-4 reversal of the lower court ruling. And it is a pure per curium decision, which means that it was issued in the name of the court and not in the name of a particular justice. I don't really know why they do this. I'll try to research it. Uh, anyway, so Kentucky law, basically in the late 70s, uh, there was a law in Kentucky passed that mandated that cla every classroom in Kentucky, um, at every level from university to kindergarten, basically, had to post the Ten Commandments on the wall in every classroom. And to try to get around the Establishment Clause problem, Kentucky had private donors buy these plaques so that Kentucky government wasn't actually purchasing them, right? Um, and Kentucky basically was saying that um, the law was secular, right? And the district court agreed, and they said basically that, number one, the law's avowed purpose was secular and not religious. Uh, number two, that the statute would neither impede nor enhance a religion or a religious group in particular. And number three, that it does not involve the state excessively in religious matters. So that's the lemon test. And the Supreme Court said, no, no, no. First of all, it just doesn't even pass the first test, right? There isn't a secular purpose to this law, and it is clearly unconstitutional, especially if you go back and look at the legislative history and the arguments that the senators were making. Um, so they strike it down. Okay. Case two, Wallace v. Jaffrey in 1985. It's a six to three affirmation of the lower court ruling and Justice Stevens delivers the majority opinion. Um, and there are three Alabama statutes in question, right? 1978, Alabama passes a law that authorizes a one minute period of silence in all schools for quote unquote meditation. Nobody really challenged it. But then in 1981, they kick it up and they add to that meditation. Now it's meditation and voluntary prayer. And then in 1982, it authorizes teachers to lead, quote, willing students in a prescribed prayer, which says, Almighty God, the creator and supreme judge of the world. And so these were challenged um, by some Alabama citizens and um the third one, the first one basically wasn't challenged, right? The meditation only, they said, yeah, that's fine. The, the third one, the lower courts just completely struck out and the Supreme Court agreed, right? The almighty God, the creator, supreme judge of the world. They're like, no, obviously that's religion. It doesn't pass the lemon test. It's out. So they want to look at the second one, right? Um, the meditation and voluntary prayer, the addition of that, those two words, voluntary prayer. And um, so they basically said that the law fails the first element of the lemon test, right? Is it secular? And they say that it's not in any way secular. Um, and they quote, the addition of or voluntary prayer indicates that the state intended to characterize prayer as a favored practice over meditation. Such an endorsement is not consistent with the established principle that the government must pursue a course of complete neutrality toward religion. So they strike it out. Okay, case number three, Edwards v. Aguilar, 1987. It is a seven to two affirmation of the lower court ruling. Justice Brennan delivers the majority opinion. And the context is that Louisiana in the 80s passed a law called the Balanced Treatment for Creation Science and Evolution Science in Public School Instruction Act. And Louisiana says <laughs> they're defending their law because it's completely secular um, and they're basically only passing the law to improve academic freedom, right? And the Supreme Court, again, says, no, nah, BS, we're calling BS. And, and again, you don't even pass the first test of the lemon test, right? The law is clearly not secular. And there, there's two big quotes in here that, that I kind of struck on to. The first is, the act does not serve to protect academic freedom, but has the distinctly different purpose of discrediting evolution, 
by counterbalancing its teaching at every turn with the teachings of creationism. And then the second was the legislative history documents that the act's primary purpose was to change the science curriculums of public schools in order to provide persuasive advantage to a particular religious doctrine that rejects the factual basis of evolution in its entirety. So they're like, look, again, this doesn't even pass the very first bar of the lemon test. You got to get it out of here. All right. Case four, Santa Fe Independent School District, or ISD, versus Doe. So uh, they chose Doe so that they could re remain anonymous. Um, the vote was a six to three affirmation of the lower court ruling, and Justice Stevens delivers the majority opinion. So the context here, again, is that Santa Fe ISD required a student to lead prayers and sort of uh, graduation invocations before all football games. And this was challenged by um, some local parents and was stopped by a district court. And so the school modified their language and said that they now permit but do not require a prayer to be said. And then the lower court basically said, no, that's still not enough that you could, if you want, what you could have is a, quote, non-sectarian, non-proselytizing prayer, right? I, I don't even know what that looks like. Um, so the Supreme Court rules that the policies implemented by Santa Fe ISD, um, basically what happened is Santa Fe again went back to the drawing board and said, okay, what we're going to do is hold an election to see first, are we going to have a prayer? Okay. And then second, when that election passes, who's going to give the prayer for the year, right? Um and that the court rules that that's um, to hold elections to have and to decide who will have hold the prayer and invocations is a tacit use of the school's government power to support religious practices and was understood to be so by the students. Um, and that students, um, if they are of the minority, say you're Muslim or you're atheist or whatever, um, they're forced to go to pep rallies and school property and grounds and equipment are used. Um, and the prayer is announced on the school's PA system. And so this is a tacit agreement by the school's officials to have prayer in school. Um, and then the big quote is the policy is invalid on its face because it establishes an improper majority election on religion and unquestionably has the purpose and creates the perception of encouraging the delivery of prayer at a series of school events. So again, the Supreme Court strikes it down and they generally strike these things down on the first test of the lemon test, right? Is it just patently non-secular? All right, uh, that is section C. I'll see you for the next one. Have a great day.